Back speaking with Bruce Richardson this morning from Anson Resources. Bruce, morning. Good morning. Nice to see you again. Yeah, good to catch up, Bruce. A uh, big collaboration you've announced here with Coke Technology Solutions. I suppose, Bruce, just firstly, tell us a bit about who Coke are. Oh, sure. It's probably not uh, very well known in Australia. The company is actually a private company, but it's a, a very substantial company, it's something like 50,000 employees, all aspects of, um, of chemical industries, oil as well. Um, very uh, substantial, um, something a couple of hundred billion dollars a year in revenue. Of course, it's as a private company, they don't publish what they actually earn, but uh, very substantial. So they um, have brought um, uh, the, the uh, technology that they have from in, into the U.S. market. Um, things are changing here in the U.S. Before the U.S. Uh, players didn't have a technology that they could use uh, for the DLE, the direct lithium extraction process. Um, but Coke has come forward now with um, with a very interesting process and one which we're looking forward to testing. And so this process will run alongside uh, your current sample demo plant, will it? That's that's correct. So we have what we call the sample demonstration plant at Green River, um, and we have that on site uh, right next to the well. The reason we have it there is that we found that uh, the lithium grade drops over time. Um, so there's uh, iron in the uh, in the brine, and when it oxidizes, it falls to the bottom of the tank. And unfortunately, it takes some of the lithium with with it. So we have to have a process where we we'll have to have a location where we're able to process immediately that after it comes out of the well. So that's why it's a green river. And and now we're uh, installing a um, a coke processing plant, uh, pilot plants, pilot units, a small unit alongside uh, what we already have, which is really the uh, sun resin uh, flow sheet uh, for DLE and downstream. And we're going to compare them over the next couple of months. And Bruce, you were up on site a bit earlier today with the, the team from Coke, were you? Correct, uh, with Coke and a few other people. Yes, we had uh, had them there um, uh, and uh, they were very interested to see what we were doing. Um, so we're moving very fast. The Green River project overall is is moving a lot faster than what we were able to achieve with the Paradox, a number of reasons for that. Um, but getting Coke up there and, and looking at what we're doing, it is a plug and play option. So um, Coke has a unit um, within a container which um, they deliver to site and we plug in all the all the uh, electricity and um, and the brine and, extra, and the waste brine, et cetera, all those sort of uh, plumbing jobs we have to do. They have it uh, online and are able to analyze the performance of their unit and adjust it as they go along. So um, very interesting technology and, and we expect to get a, a pretty quick result out of that. Well, you're expecting uh, pilot production to kick off next month, are you? Yes, um, so it, um, it needs to be installed. Um, so great to get the lawyers uh, to finish their work and now we can move on to the next stage of actually doing the work. So um, we have been talking to them since Christmas um, co uh, that is, and um, we now um, have got that unit uh, organised and we just need to uh, plug it in and, and start uh, looking at the results that come out of it. And how long would the, the pilot test run run for? It's a little bit um, hard to say. Uh, we expect it will be two to four months, uh, depending upon how quickly they get to what they call steady state, where they feel comfortable with the way it's performing. Uh, that's the the bit which we can't put a put a time on, um, but uh, we expect that will be completed two to four. So let's hope for two. And Bruce, you've also had some news in the last couple of weeks here on the Ajana project in Western Australia, emerging as a, a host to a suite of critical minerals. Yes, um, that that was uh, quite interesting, and it fits nicely into uh, our company and the objectives that we have, those critical minerals, they're used in electronics, uh, they're used in for sensors, they're used for lots of things, um, which are important in the world these days. Uh, we did conducted a drilling program at Ajana uh, at the end of last year, we're looking uh, to establish a drop resource for lead, zinc and uh, silver. So in the zinc, um, often you find critical minerals such as gallium, uh, indium, germanium and barium. And so we, we did assay for those and we found that we do have um, a pretty good results there, um, up to over 60 ppm of, of uh, gallium, for example. And then we've done some more research and found that previous companies that are drilled there had also identified um, these critical minerals. And also the government had done soil sampling in the 1960s over the area and identified that they were there as well. 
So uh, at the moment, we're putting a bunch of that uh, data together to uh, uh, help us to decide on how we might move forward uh, with that project, perhaps a drilling program um, to establish a, um, a resource. So we, we're working on uh, the resource for lead, zinc and silver, and now uh, we're starting to work on how we might include the other critical minerals in that drop resource calculation. Well, give us an idea just how valuable some of these critical minerals are. Yes, they're very valuable. The, the consumption, of course, is quite low. It's used in um, electronics, uh, chips, etc. cetera. Um, Germanium is about 2,500 a kilogram. So you add on three zeros to get to tons. And you can see it's very exciting stuff there. But um, uh, gallium, around $800 a kilo. So same, add the three zeros. Um, very uh, important minerals. And the reason that they're at such high prices is that Chinese had um, closed the doors on export of them. Um, last year. Uh, and so a lot of um, Western companies in US and uh, sorry, in Europe are looking for alternative supp uh, suppliers or those things. Just so happens that we we have them usually found with zinc and, uh, and bauxite concentrations. Uh, high concentrations of zinc is what we have. And um, that's how we're able to identify that we also have the critical minerals there. And not many would know, Bruce, gallium itself used in uh, night vision goggles. So an important defense element. Yes, there is a defense aspect to it. Thanks for pointing that out, Andrew. Um, there is a, a very important uh, aspect to what's going on at the world at the moment. Um, we can read into that. And, uh, you know, we hope that we are able to um, not take advantage of the opportunities that have been presented by a changing uh, environment. Yeah, good to see you, Bruce. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Andrew.